you touch on something regarding the 99% and you say many writers can format a script, but most writers can't do, and that is. Yeah, so in my experience as a script consultant, 99% of writers um, fail to tell a story that what the 99% do instead is I would describe as present a situation. Um, so they pay me good money as a script consultant to come in and read their script. It may be perfectly formatted in industry standard. It may have some interesting characters here and there. It may have some great dialogue. It may have some interesting plot points. Um, but invariably, I was discovering 99% of the time, they were failing to tell a story. Um, instead, they were presenting a situation. So, um, you know, one way that I can describe it, a situation is it's like life, where in life this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And that's not a story, right? That's episodic. Um, a story, there's a connection where between the parts. This happens, which leads to that happening, which makes it ironic when this other thing happens. Uh, there's a connection between the parts. Uh, another way I can put it is if I can take your protagonist out of your script and put a completely different one in, and maybe with a couple of tweaks, it works just as well. You have a situation, my friend, not a story. Interesting. I shouldn't be able to do that. If you're telling a story, if I were to take your protagonist out, it would no longer work. A story is unique to your protagonist. There's something, there's a unique journey, a reason why you, the master of the universe here, has put this character on this path. There's something in that character that you've chosen to do this particular plot in order to bring out something in them. And so if I can put just another character in and it works just as well, that's not a situation. That's not testing anything specific to the character. It's just an arbitrary situation that you put a character, you put someone into. And that's what most people do. I mean, that's the way a lot of us start. It's, it's not, you know, I don't mean to, um, it, it doesn't mean that it's not a fixable situation. Um, and that's why my method is why I have these on a form so we can see visually right there and then, oh yeah, this, is, this piece is working, but you can see this piece doesn't work. We can isolate these elements and we can fix them looking at this one page form and it's way easier to do it on this one page form than if you've already written a screenplay, then it's gonna be a bit more of a mess. Um, we can still use the form, but it's gonna be, it's gonna mean going back a little bit to the drawing board in order to fix those parts, in order to make it into a powerful story. I wonder if we can reverse engineer a current film that's out and make it into a situation. So I know sometimes I use movies that are dated, so let me try to like, A Star is Born. How could we reverse engineer it so that if we broke it down and we change it to a situation so we could see, like, d dissect it. Let me give you a different example. Sure. It's, okay. my, favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite example okay. to give. Um, is the movie Tootsie. Oh, right? yes. Right? Love so it. great. Every screenwriter, every filmmaker should know Tootsie, right? If you haven't seen awesome. it, you, you have to go see it. It's a great movie to look structurally. Uh. This is what is exactly what's happening. 99% um, of writers are writing what I call fat Tootsie. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. This is fat Tootsie. I'm going to take the same movie, Tootsie. We have a protagonist, Michael Dorsey, out of work actor, right? Can't get an acting job. Right. And he's desperate for an acting job. And so he's going to audition for the soap opera. And I'm going to make two very small changes um, to the plot. Is He's going to audition for the soap opera in disguise. But what it is, the part isn't a, a female character. The part is going to be a male character, but the character is an obese man in the fictional um, soap opera world, so the town that the soap opera takes place in. So Michael Dorsey is desperate for an acting job, right? So he's going to go to his makeup artist friend to have prostheses made and a costumer to make him a fat suit. And he's going to go into the audition pretending that he's actually an obese man. And he's going to get the part. So we have the exact same movie. Michael Dorsey, out of work actor, desperate for an acting job, gets a part on a soap opera. The only thing I'm going to change is instead of the part being a female character, it's the part of a fat man, right? Very similar movie. Almost works, right? We tend to think it's funny seeing a, a man dress up an, as a woman in movies. 
We also could find it funny seeing this little, you know, guy like Dustin Hoffman pretending to be a big fat guy, right? Mm. He's got to get in and out of his fat suit, you know, before anyone sees him. Um, it almost works. But ultimately, fat Tootsie is a situation, not a story. You have any idea what the difference might be? Trying to forgive me. It's been a, it's been yeah. a little bit since I've seen it. I, I'm just remembering like when he is Tootsie that you know there's like this sort of where someone falls in love with him and there's this like dilemma mm -hmm. like how to like how does he tell him that he's a man he can he's got to keep this cover. So what would be? Yeah, and I could even tweak it though where uh -huh. that wasn't an issue where in in it he, he gets a um, crush on his female co-star. Right. right, the, right. I'll make another tweak though for Fat Tootsie. Okay, he'll tell his co-star. That he's gay, so fat. So she, feel, Julie, the love interest, feels just as comfortable with him. Uh, her co-star, who she perceives as this gay fat man, right? She feels just as comfortable with him as she felt with the Dorothy character, the female persona. So still, almost works, right? We have the exact same thing, and then for the love interest, because he's um, he says he's gay. Part of the real uh, in the movie the Toot in Tootsie that his uh, Julie's father gets a crush on the Dorothy character. Right. But we'll make Dor we'll make Julie's father gay. Right. Okay. So that could work. So it's still working the same. I'm, you stumped me. Yeah. There. I'm, I want to. Well, I've stumped a lot of people. <laughs> this is the key to the, this is key. And let me tell you, ninety nine percent of writers are writing fat Tootsie. It's a clever sounding situation. But it's not a story. The key, the big difference is one of the, the biggest structural, and this is one of the eight elements, but it's the most important element, is the flaw. That there's something in this journey that you've chosen in the plot you've created, that you put this character in, that's going to test a central flaw in them. Um, any idea what Michael Dorsey's flaw might be? Well, um, I guess he's, he's struggling with his career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's true, yeah, but a flaw is something we can blame them with, for. So something we oh. look at them, you look down upon them. So what would you say is, what is a negative about him that we're judging, we can judge him about? A You're lie. kind of in the ballpark though. It has to, it's related to his career. Right, lack of confidence, lack of skill. Maybe he's not honing, I don't know, going after yeah. the wrong parts. He has a different, an overinflated view of himself, underinflated, I don't know. Well, I think most people point out the overinflated view, that he's very, very arrogant, mm -hmm. right? That he is, that's, you know, um, one of the reasons he hasn't been getting acting work is because he's so difficult to work with. And the only thing is, I would argue, after the movie Tootsie, do you think this guy's going to be any less arrogant on his next acting job? No, because he yeah. was able to pull it off. Right. And so now he has a supreme Exactly. Balance. Yeah. Exactly. So that, has a, he has, that is one of his flaws, arrogance. It's not the one that the movie's testing. The one that the movie's testing is his lack of respect for women. Ah, okay. Right? So we see in the beginning, this early scene at this party, he hits on every single woman with the same stupid line. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though I think he'd probably call himself a feminist, um, <laughs> he's actually a real jerk to women. Right? He's, you know, he's great friends with the Terry Gar character, and, but the moment they sleep together, he suddenly freaks out and treats her, treats her terribly. Um, so deep down, he has this lack of respect for women. That is the perfect test of somebody who has a lack of respect for women. If you make them have to pretend to be a woman. Interesting. Right? But in fact, Tootsie, that has nothing to do with his flaw. It's an arbitrary situation we've put him in. So unless we were to change the flaw, if we made the flaw, you know, somebody who had a, a prejudice against people, um, you know, of different weight or, or different appearance, something like that. We could do. We could. We could change the character so it was testing someone. But with the character that's in the original Tootsie of this man who's arrogant and doesn't respect women, putting him in a fat suit, that doesn't do anything to test that character. Right. So that's what ninety-nine percent of writers are doing. It sounds clever, right? It sounds interesting to see somebody. You know, he's trying to pretend. It seems to be have some interesting themes about being someone who trying to pretend to be someone who you're not. We've got some funny comedy moments. Um, ideas in there it has nothing to do with the character.
Right, and he gets hit on, and I remember the one yeah. scene where they're like, "Can you guys back up the camera?" And right. then they're like, "How far can we go?" Right. You know? So he's being judged for his looks. Mm -hmm. He's being hit on. All these different things. All these things right, that he right. does uh -huh. that he doesn't even realize he's doing. Right. Right. He does even in the movie in the in in caught you know in that second act he still doesn't realize it. Um, you know, that he's been doing these things all along. And it's, it's, there's a great moment when the, the sexist director turns things around and says something about the fact that, that, you know, he's the sexist director has been dating Julie and um, the, his Michael's Dorothy persona is kind of suggests, I know what's going on. And, and the director says, yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. I see other women, but I, I wouldn't want to tell her. I wouldn't want to hurt her. Right. And Michael Dorsey's used that exact same line talking about Terry Gar. Right. Of course, you know, I don't want to hurt her, right? So he doesn't even realize he's doing these things. Sure. So this is the way, this is the way we're going to get the character to finally face something. So another important concept about this is that your character's not a victim. Michael Dorsey's not a victim of the universe suddenly making him have to be a woman and deal with that. He actually asked for this. He wanted an acting part. He said he could handle this. He said, I'll take, you know, I'll do anything. I'll do any acting job. He willingly went in there and auditioned for this. Um, so this is another part of the 99%. They're making their character a victim of circumstance. They're having arbitrary stuff happen to the character. It shouldn't be. Um, your character should not be a victim. Even if your character is a, a victim, um, for them truly to be a protagonist, they, they need to have a certain amount of agency involved. They need to be contributing to the problem in some way. If you don't give your character a strong flaw, you're just making them a victim. The, all, the reason these bad things are happening to them are just fate. It's just bad luck in the world. It shouldn't be that. Um, that might be part of it, but it needs to be part of you know why it's so difficult for Michael Dorsey and Tootsie is the fact that he's sexist. If he weren't a sexist guy, he wouldn't have been having a difficult time in Act Two of Tootsie. Um, so uh, what we're doing is that we're making sure that we're testing the character with something um, that is getting something, getting down at something deep down inside of them that's unique to them, and 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 that's why this character exists in this story instead of another character.